I know the title sounds dramatic, but it's something that's been on my mind for a while. I remember growing up with so much shoujo anime, like so much. What can I say? I like cute girls doing cute things, especially like the super duper happy-go-lucky types with twin tails. But it doesn't stop there. I never felt so emotionally invested, felt so represented, and overall truly related to the characters as much as I did while watching shoujo anime. This is my life, so shut up and smile! This is my life, so shut up and smile! Smile hello and smile goodbye! Smile with your teeth and smile with your eyes! The world is your oyster when you flash them a smile! Ask for an inch and they'll give you a mile! So when you're feeling blue, just shut up and smile! Wet life give you lemon, just shut up and smile! But at some point, Shoujo had simply disappeared out of my life. And maybe you felt this way too. I wondered, did my taste change or was I not as interested in the genre as I initially thought? But that wasn't the case. I realized consuming manga had replaced the whole left by watching shoujo anime. Manga is typically in color, has some breathtaking art, I can read it at my own pace, and has likable characters that I enjoy, or unlikable characters that I wish to see get destroyed. Balanced, as everything should be. But I pondered on this, and I wasn't really sure why I wasn't seeing new releases of shoujo anime, at least like I was used to in the past. If I ever did watch any, it was typically my faves that I've watched already a dozen times over. One of the more obvious reasons for the lack of shoujo is audience. That doesn't only apply to anime, but just female media in general. It's easier to get girls to watch shows targeted at guys than it is to get guys to watch shows targeted at females. From a business standpoint, why wouldn't you go towards an option that has more potential to get more eyes on it? A good example of this is Madoka Magica, which has the magical girl aspect. From the outside looking in, that doesn't really appeal to a lot of guys and would make them reluctant to give it a try even though they might actually enjoy the darker tone of the show. It just sucks because I usually can't get into shonen romance like I can with shoujo romance. In shonen, the female characters aren't really written the best. They feel very flat and forgotten and just like another cog in the machine. This is especially true with anime centered around harems. That's why I look at anime like Quisential, Quisential, Quisential Quintuplets, oh my goodness, this name, Quisential Quintuplets, that anime, or rent a girlfriend and can't help but roll my eyes. Most of the time, I wouldn't mind if they were just isekai'd out of the story entirely, honestly. <laughs> Actually, I prefer when shonen, more so adventure or action-based shonen, has very little to no romance at all. More times than not, the romance kind of kills the show for me. And one of the things that drew me into shoujo in the first place is that the female characters didn't feel one-dimensional and I could actually root for the main love interest without feeling the need to unplug my TV. <laughs> it's true, it's true. So what do you do when you like shoujo anime, but there's a lack of content? Your interest doesn't suddenly just disappear, you oftentimes just shift it to another area. Some just kept reading manga as they always have with the hopes of it maybe being turned into a manga. Um, what? A manga. With the hopes of maybe it being turned into an anime someday. But even then, there's a higher likelihood that it becomes a live action before it does an anime. Even if it does become an anime, there's a slim chance that you'll get more than 12 episodes or even a second season. Others shifted towards Korean media, consuming manguas and K-dramas because they lend themselves to be more directed at a female audience and it's a lot easier to direct and produce a romance than an action-packed show that needs CGI and other special effects. There are also those who may have matured at the shoujo genre entirely, seeking a more mature genre like Jose. I know for me, a lot of the shoujo anime I grew up with, I wouldn't be as interested if I were to get into them today. I can make an entire video on about the lack of Jose. It follows a similar pipeline to shoujo that you'll often see it as live action before it even is considered for an anime. And when it comes to the lack of shoujo, some have expressed that, oh, it's because all shoujo is the same. They're also, they're also alike, which you can apply that logic to a multitude of genres. I don't know why shoujo is the one to get picked on when it comes to that. Also unpopular opinion, but I like the isekai genre. As cookie cutter as it can be sometimes, I never get tired of it. I know some people wish for the genre to burn down to the ground, but I enjoy it. 
Then again, I typically stick to manga and the ones within the shoujo genre. There's only a select few I would actually watch. And some are actually getting um, an anime adaption this year, which I'm super excited for. So I said all that to say, so being same-ish to me or not having the most original plot imaginable doesn't really turn me off from consuming a series. As long as I like the characters, I'm usually fine. That or I'm extremely bored out of my mind. Before I wrap things up, I wanted to highlight some of my favorite female characters within shoujo. Starting with Gonkan Alice. Actually, I never said it out loud, so I'm not sure that's actually how you pronounce it. But um, Miken and Hotoru, I really enjoyed their friendship. I like how it was pretty much the catalyst for the series to like set in motion. Maybe, maybe, I don't know, maybe I'm just kind of misremembering stuff, but I feel like you don't see it a lot in shoujo. It's a friendship that starts the series. It's like usually like something else, like a romance or something. I don't know. And even if it seems like Hotoru is giving Miken the cold shoulder, it was obvious how deeply they cared for one another. And I always enjoy seeing such friendships. I think it's kind of really wholesome and just really heartwarming to see. Uh, the next one on my list is Yumido Pastry. I don't want to spoil too much, but I enjoy Ichigo's growth to being kind of like the weakest, the weakest, the weakest, the weakest link in her group to essentially having her ideas and creativity being the thing that leads the group to victory. She can be a bit ditzy at times, which I really found um, charming and captivating about her character. She, she's just a bundle of joy. I love her. After that is Shugo Chara. And I related to Ama Hinamori so freaking much. The idea of like hiding your true self and feelings and just having to like have so much like self-doubt about oneself was really intriguing to me. And I think was kind of what made me latch on to her. And the idea of having like these eggs, as weird as it sounds, like be your true self. It was wacky. It was a bit weird, but I liked it. Um, and I was a really big fan of Utel. I think in the beginning I wasn't, but seeing her character arc and just seeing her like come into her own self was so inspiring i guess and i, I really just liked her character i think she, I, I don't know something about it and then her aesthetic also the fashion in the show can we talk about that the fashion <laughs> these elementary school kids are like dripped out for what <laughs> then princess tutu which i've already kind of talked at length in another video of mine's but i mainly focused on rue because i absolutely adore rue especially her character and just this is like one of the few like shows that like made me like ball my eyes out by the end. I was just in tears. I also really enjoyed Duck. I thought her willingness to be, you know, of help and her what and her determination was really aspiring and I just liked her as a character. She's really kind of like one of those like happy go lucky characters that I really enjoy. So And she's a duck, which is a plus in my book. And I found the plot of Princess Tutu to be very unique. Not even just for its time, but even today, I would still say it's very unique. Special A holds a special place in my heart. I can't tell you how many times I've watched this show. Hikari, <laughs> Hikari would always make me chuckle by the, just the different shenanigans and like misunderstandings she would get herself into. I was really intrigued by Megami because she didn't say a lot, but it was refreshing to see her internal dialogue um, express more throughout the series. <sighs> I'm so happy to get that off my chest. It's, I've, I've been just thinking about this for the longest time and it's nice to have that finally, I don't know, put into words, I guess. I do have a Patreon where you can get my uploads a little bit earlier. And I'm also trying something new called an editor's cut where I include for selected videos, things I couldn't in the YouTube upload, usually because of copyright. It's just a way for you to support my channel. Of course, never feel an obligation to do so. If you just want to watch me solely on YouTube, that's okie dokie too. Now back to whatever else I was saying. But let me know what show do you keep up with. What are your thoughts on the genre as a whole? And thank you so, so, so much for watching. I am Thorne, and I'll catch you guys later. Bye. That's why I look at anime like consensual with what? Like consent. That's why I look at anime like consensual Oh my God, consensual <laughs> with that anime or rent a girlfriend and i can't help but roll my eyes most of the time i wouldn't mind if they were just isekai out of the anime entirely wouldn't bother me none oh my fucking gosh what oh, that's definitely not it <laughs> what then i'm not even pronouncing pastry right what the heck oh this is not helping Okay, the next one, I think it's pronounced Yumuro Pastry. 
I'm, oh, oh, these names are going to be the death of me. And your thoughts on the genre as a whole? 